Hi, I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie. Our question this week is about collecting seed, a simple process that is nonetheless a little confusing. When should seeds be collected and can they be collected after they freeze? First, let's address the issue of freezing. Since most plants will complete their flowering and fruit production prior to any freezing conditions, this is normally a moot point since you'll collect them from the plant before they fall to the ground. But ultimately, most seeds that there would be any chance of you collecting closer to frosty times will be from dry fruited plants. We'll get back to dry versus wet fruits in a second. But back to the freezing. Dried seeds really aren't susceptible to freezing temperatures. Since they're dry, there's no water inside them to freeze. But for clarity, if for some reason the fruits are not mature and dry, yes, they would freeze if left on the plant too long and thus most likely would not be viable. For plants that have dry fruit at maturity, like beans and most annual and perennial flowers, you'll leave the fruit on the plant until it dries completely, then harvest it, remove the seeds, and store them. For plants that have wet fruits at full maturity, like squash, pumpkins, and tomatoes, you'll harvest the fruit at the normal time, then remove the seeds from the fleshy fruit and allow them to dry. For all seeds, it's best to keep them in a cool, dark, dry place, either in small paper sacks or in plastic containers. Then plant according to life cycle in either fall or spring. For specific information for particular plants, contact your local county extension office. For our plant highlight this week, we feature some of our viewers' great garden plants to attract pollinators. Sandra Bacasa has bee balm and salvia in her garden, which attracts hummingbirds and bees, of course. And Debbie Contess from Pflugerville has monarch visiting flower bed designed with Greg's Miss Flower milkweed, salvia, and lantana that she planted just for them. Jeff Ferris shared his white flowering Texas sage, Cenizo. White is not a common flower for this Zurich shrub, but all colors are attractive to bees and hummingbirds. Alicia Marie has lots of butterfly visitors on her lantana. And Laura Burns at Stone Forest Preschool is instilling respect for nature in future generations by taking some of our youngest citizens outdoors. They discovered these great treasures in the garden this summer. And lastly, we wanted to share this delightful throwback to spring 2017 from Diana Saunders. When a baby blue jay hopped onto her patio, she grabbed her phone for a shot of the dad blue jay feeding. We'd love to hear from you, so check us out at klru.org to send us your questions, pictures, and videos. Mm -hmm.